but it's um it's an interesting way to start off because when you start talking and listening and it's almost like you're trying to listen to what you're saying but I know it's kind of messing me up a bit but I like it <laughs> <laughs> now nah, you're gonna be good man but right, um cool. I'm glad you found the place the place is you know nice little location right here this place is awesome I didn't even know this place existed <clears throat> it's it's nice to so when I was looking for some type of a space for John and I and I was also looking for an office obviously to get editing done to put things all my gear and whatnot and just have a place to go because right. working from home mm -hmm. sucked and I know there's a lot of people embracing working from home right now. No, you need like an office. Like you that. need a space. Nice. You have to have a space because when I was have when I'd have you know meetings with people and tell them, oh yeah, meet me at Starbucks. It's like that only nah. works for a certain <clears throat> amount of time, and then you just start looking like unprofessional. So you mm. meet your uh, clients that you shoot also here. I meet my clients that I shoot here, and you know usually the office space that the little office um, suite that we use in the middle for a conference room. So I just go there and we. Oh hash out any details i've done shoots in the area too because it's i mean the scene outside is nice. beautiful area. Roslyn's well, beautiful what's the water outside what would that water be right under the bridge i think that goes up to the sound uh, okay let me see yeah i think that goes up to the sound because that points <clears throat> this this going north this is going north we're facing south right now it throws you off a little bit when you think about it so if you were over the aqueducts that would be the water yes okay mm -hmm. I got yeah you. so that points towards connecticut mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh listen man it's, it's the space that I really wanted to have just because you, like I said, when you're doing your own thing and you're trying to look professional, you got to act it too. So that was like the next step to get there. Yeah, these, 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 Sorry lawn, about the chairs. these lawn chairs are going to kill it. That's okay. <laughs> I look like I'm five foot. <laughs> you do. You do look man short, which is great because then I can see right over you to this camera. Beautiful. Uh, so, I mean, being we're all three gym guys sitting here. Uh, wild shit about yesterday. John, mm -hmm. as a business owner, as a gym owner, and I mean, you have di direct tie-ins with gyms because right. of the new supplement store, which I want to talk about, mm -hmm. and then obviously Bev's for all of us. Right. Uh, I wanted John to kind of talk about how he felt kind of on that situation because for me, I put out that story yesterday on my IG and a lot of people messaged me about it. I think it's bullshit for 33%. Uh, I don't think it's bullshit to be opening, obviously. I think that if you want to start somewhere, that's fine. But some random number like 33%, it just feels like a jerk-off number. Like, fuck you guys. Here. You know, it, it, he could have made up any number and just landed on 33%. So do you yeah. think he really wanted 25% and he just knew the backlash he was going to get was just that's, too much? So he just kind of nudged kind it of up a thinking. little bit. And then, you know, 33 is not as bad as 25. It's a third. It's not as bad. Yeah, I was thinking um, he was going to call for 25%. But everybody else is going to say, well, what the fuck? Everybody else in the world gets 50%. Mm. So let's just hash it in the middle before any of you said anything. Right. Because Is it still 50% everywhere else? I think or so. Or is it 100%? I think some places are fully open. I feel like yeah. Flor yeah. Florida's, Florida's killing it right now. Up, yeah. yeah. I mean, and what is, what is the inf I, I, I've heard mixed reviews. I've heard that it's uh, the infection rates are soaring, and then you hear the CDC comes out and they're like, "Ah, eh, by the way, we fucked up like three hundred thousand right. numbers." Between yeah. the false positives and more people getting tested, <clears throat> the number is obviously up. But it, mm -hmm. you know, what's actually who actually has uh, Corona versus what's false numbers or just more people getting tested in general. I mean, the numbers should be higher now if they're testing more now than they were six months ago. But that doesn't mm -hmm. mean more people have it necessarily. Exactly. So. Right. And because not to mention the decibel number mess ups, like with Florida. Where they're like, oh, 98% of the testing positive. Sure, it wasn't fucking nine. They moved it over two decimals <laughs> yeah, the wrong way. Right, right, right. That's a big mistake. <laughs> That's a big mistake to make. It's just, uh, it's just strange that that they're. I'm, I won't say harping because I, I, I get, I get so much backlash all the time, especially on Facebook. I, I, I had to stop posting. Like I'm so <laughs> close to deactivating my account because I, I don't post that often. But when I do, I like throw a little article out there. Mm -hmm. But then everybody that's waiting to just attack me and throw something out at me is like sitting there waiting, like, oh, Nick posted it. Let's get him. It's just such a weird thing that people can't have their own opinions on what's going on. Right. In terms of, yeah, the virus is real. Yeah, people are dying. Yeah, it sucks. However, at what percentage is that going to allow you to affect everyone else's lives? Absolutely. I mean, f you go back to regular flu season. Flu season kills thousands you go back to swine flu. I was in high school. They were we were laughing I about that, that shit. Yeah. They didn't have us do anything Nothing. different. <laughs> they just had an assembly on. They're like, by the way, there's this thing called swine flu. It's not great. But just if you feel sick, stay home. <laughs> That's basically. But, the by the way, you don't get anybody sick. So let's put you all in a room together and explain why. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, and then you know you come back to the point of liquor stores, Targets, all these places are open. You're telling me that from day one, all of these ventilation systems, everything about these places was checked off and deemed safe it's like come on man how stupid do you think we are so to jump into the nitty-gritty do you think 
seeing the facts that this really isn't any more deadly than any bad case of the flu or something like that, that this is all for a political reason, like in New York especially? So I would think so to the fullest if it didn't affect the entire world. If it was mm-hmm. just an isolated incident in the states, I would ha- I would be more keen to say, yeah, this is definitely political, especially because it's an election year and because there's a lot of shit going, a lot of moving parts going on at the same time. Right. It's almost like 2020 is becoming the year of like coincidences, just yeah. everything kind of happening and unfolding at a, at a at an untimely event, but timely for other people. So, I think that if Italy didn't get so hit so hard, right. mm-hmm. all these other places, I think I'd have more of an inclination to say, yeah, it is, but. Yeah, you know, How do you affect the entire world for just something in the in the states? Like something like that would come out, and and the world would be appalled if, if say, we release the virus, right? Virus. You know, even um, I kind of think that basically the same way because if we were trying to do this for a political reason, right? I'll bring it back to when the government announced, "Hey, look, by the way, guys, aliens are real. These are UFOs." <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> this is the only year. In the history of ever where if the government said, hey, by the way, aliens are real, this is going on, and we have some UFOs, that nobody gave a fuck. Right. This, that would have been a year's worth of No news. one really did care. When that nobody came gave, out, they didn't nobody gave a shit. Everyone just kind of, and Bob <laughs> Lazar, who was on uh, Rogan's podcast, talking about how they brought him in back in the 80s or 70s to work on these alien spacecrafts mm-hmm. they found. Mm-hmm. He just, he put an Instagram post out there. He's like, hey, I just want to thank everybody for believing in me because nobody yeah. else did. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't really follow up anything past that other than the video, so I guess no one really spoke about it, Nobody right? gave a shit. Yeah. And so I feel like that was the government putting it out going like, shit, people are really bad in the U.S. right now. Uh, that wasn't our intention. Let's, let's give them something else to talk about. Right. Just nothing. Yeah, it's absolutely <laughs> radio silence, so. Yeah. Yeah, it becomes, it becomes a political, I think, state side. Right. When you have um, this type of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Not, not, and when I say political, I don't mean election stuff, but I mean control. And right. when, you, when you deem certain activities not allowed, and you deem people not allowed to do things in specifics, and say you're essential, you're not, but then you allow other activities to go on, you're sitting there, you, as, a, as a common person who can logically think, you're sitting there scratching your head going, why? Yeah. Do, am, I, am I that fucking crazy or against the grain where I think that this is nuts? And, and, and there's no one to talk to. You can't talk to family members because everyone's got their own opinion. Right. There's no government official that you can talk to because everyone's got their own agendas and they're all pointing fingers at one another. I mean, if, I, if we were to go to, up to Cuomo right now and go, yo, you're an asshole. For real. You're a fucking dick. You know what you're doing. You killed thousands in the senior homes and now you're, you're suppressing gyms for what reason? Mm-hmm. Where, you're, to boast about numbers being lower than anywhere right. else in the country, but then you invite all the MLB <clears throat> teams to come to, to New York and you still allow the MTV Music Awards to go on. What is your logic? You still allow the supermarkets to be open. There's more people yeah. walking in and out there than in a gym. I mean, I don't understand. Well, that was that was one of the arguments, and I, I want to get to what yeah. you're going to say. Yeah. That was one of the arguments. One of the arguments was if you are releasing a virus to the public and you want to get as many people sick as humanly possible mm-hmm. and spread it in different towns and then states and then countries, what you would do is you'd send everybody to the same fucking place in each town. And what did everyone do right when the st- shit started hitting the fan? Super. Everyone ran to the grocery stores. <laughs> right. And then, you know, my mom and I got a, got a notification that one of the workers at Trader Joe's, he had uh, two of them got tested positive for, mm-hmm. for COVID. So now I'm sitting here looking at all the groceries on the counter. I'm just like, what does this mean? Does mm-hmm. this mean that it's on these things and now we have to wash everything? And nothing happened. Nothing the, happened. The best way to do the grocery stores would have been self-checkout only. Because say you're positive, right? And you're touching all this shit. Now the grocery store clerk is touching it all. Now it's on her hands, right? Touching the next person's stuff, the next person, the next person. Doesn't matter if they have gloves or not, they're infecting every single thing they touch. So if you wanted everything to be open, self-checkout only. Well, yes and no, because then you have a lot of a lot of people touching things that are before you unless they're going to sanitize after each person. True, but it's easier to touch one little keypad than every single one of your groceries. But wasn't the biggest flop, I thought, that the Who came out and said that... Uh, it doesn't last as long? It, on the surface, you really can't get it at all, actually. <sighs> like, like after, like, six, five months, of like, you know what? You actually can't get it on the surface. It's, like, really, really hard to get. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, everyone stopped wearing the gloves. Well, I, so I used to wear one glove. I used to Michael Jackson it. I used to, I used to wear, <laughs> I used to wear one glove in the grocery store. So I would, I would, that would be my, that would be my touch everything hand. But then right. by the time it would come to pull my credit card out and my keys, I'd be like, oh, 
yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do this. And I'd be fumbling with everything in one pocket and trying to get it all in. And then mm-hmm. finally I just said, fuck it. I'll go in the store. I'll get what I need, and then when I'm done, I'll wash my hands, and we're done. I don't touch my mouth. I'm not sitting in the rice aisle going, hey, anybody want condiments for this? Like, I'm not doing that. (laughs) It's... I, I got into a I got into a, like a little debate with the grocery store w- woman early on, and then I realized that I just don't care anymore, and I stopped talking. And actually, that's my new tactic. My new tactic is if I say something online on Facebook, especially, mm-hmm. which let's be honest, I'm not posting anymore. But when I did, <laughs> when I did a couple of times, and somebody would just come out with like this hateful, just spitting bullshit at me, my new thing is I just go okay at the end at the end of whatever they say. Okay, whatever you say. Well, okay. My favorite you're, tool is the thumbs up emoji. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you're you're right. Good job, Pre- buddy. I appreciate you writing out this, you know, this prologue to everything that I just said, but I, I, it's okay. Okay, whatever you say. So, would you post something like, "Hey, like this is bullshit. The gym should be open," and then someone would come at you with something so like, for, "That's in, fucked up." In this no. instance, it was about the 9/11 lights. Oh, okay. And how yeah. I thought okay. it was bullshit I agree that too. that mm-hmm. uh, the, that they said because of safety reasons they don't want to do right. it. You could easily have people work in shifts. You could easily. This is just another way to 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 just almost push that a piece of the history out of out of the out of the books. Is it also because it might put police, New York cops, and in, uh, in the in a positive light, which is kind of against the agenda right now? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Is that a big reason. I mean, we you, you know we, we, we had we had my boy Julio I, I on who talked about a lot of shit that's going on. And he he's been a police officer for a long time, and he's served mm-hmm. in the military. I mean, whatever you whatever you're for, and whatever you really you feel on, you're entitled to that opinion. But when you start bashing other people for what they feel, that's when you're an asshole, and that's when you need to just go sit in the corner, and your internet privileges are restricted. <laughs> we're taking the keyboard, we're taking the mouse, and your smartphone is no longer enabled. We got a Soviet Union, this shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna dark dark web you. That done. You, you, you only have access to. Uh, Mice, uh, MySpace. They yeah, you only MySpace. have access to illegal uh, illegal um, animals to purchase online and <laughs> random drug paraphernalia. That's all you can have. But so I posted that and I got irritated. And then this this kid that I went to high school with, he he wrote this whole thing out. Oh well, it seems like your anger is displaced. Uh, you know that it's on the government and not. A, I said, but government has final say. Absolutely. Government mm-hmm. has final say. He's like, well, it's the museum's choice. I said, yes and no, because Cuomo and, and De Blasio also said that they don't want this to happen. Mm-hmm. So until people started really backlashing and then they kind of just tur- put themselves in the corner. They flipped it around really quick. Yeah, of mm-hmm. course. Well, same thing with the gyms. I think, and I'm sure everybody else feels this way. The only reason that we're having this conversation of gyms being able to open on Monday is primarily because his court hearing is coming up, and he's going to get crucified for that, mm-hmm. and he's going to get crucified for killing all the old people. That the, the, the nursing home one is going to kill him, absolutely. 150 yeah. people yeah. died in my grandfather's nursing home. If he didn't pass away in November, he definitely would have died from I that. I just heard the mm-hmm. number was like double what they originally thought, so I mean, uh, he's going to get a lot of flack for that. Good, he mm-hmm. deserves yeah, it. He does, absolutely. Yeah. He deserves it. I'm, I'm waiting for the other one to fuck up, f- finally, like fully fuck up, where, where they just, they get it, they, they get him on everything and they just throw him out of, of the city. I can't wait till they're all gone. <laughs> all these guys are idiots. I don't care who they bring in, just make them better. Just make them better than what we're dealing with right now. That's all I'm asking. Because uh, when it comes down to it, they're all sitting in their ivory towers, and we still have to go to work every single day. So it it doesn't really matter for us. It it does, but it doesn't. And our say really doesn't mean anything in the long run. It doesn't mean anything. Exactly. We've we've seen that the last few months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that we just kind of sit there and uh, and unfortunately take it. Uh, Side story. I was in Manhasset just now. Mm -hmm. I was at the pet shop uh, getting some stuff for the baby wolf. (laughs) And... uh, I'm walking down the street, wide open, in the, in, the, in the wide open street, and two people had masks on. It's cool. Mm-hmm. I get it. Maybe, they have, maybe they're sick. Maybe whatever it is. But every time I stopped, because the guy that was coming down the street behind me, every time I stopped, he stopped, because I didn't have a mask on. <laughs> oh, every, time, every time I kept walking and I'd stop, he stopped again. I'm like, what are we doing, man? If you're this, this paranoid, why are you out? Stay home. Well, they probably wear the masks at home like they do in their car. Too. Well, I saw, one, I, saw one with, I saw one with a face shield who Jeez. couldn't even pull out of the spot, and she almost swapped <laughs> sides for three cars. I'm like, this is the problem. It was funny. I saw somebody with a mask on today on the highway, right, while they were driving the car. Right. But, you know, usually if you stop giving a shit, you just put it under your nose, which I've worn under my nose the whole fucking time. The guy had it under his nose in his car. Like, look at me. I'm, I'm not doing the right thing. You're in your own fucking car. I think it'll be all right. What, what is the point? I just don't, why are they, you know, I, I left it on in the car sometimes. So I have to go from, like, I, I was at the supermarket and then right down the block of CVS and I don't fucking feel like putting it back on yeah. and off. So I'll put it, like you said, under your nose, under your chin and drive with it. 
are people that drive on the highway with it or around like <laughs> What, what what are they doing? They're gonna get it from their car. Apparently. <laughs> like, so I had somebody I had somebody comment online. I had asked that early on. I said, why do people why are yeah. people driving with masks? And one of the people someone commented at me <laughs> saying, Well, if someone sneezes in the car oh, in God. front of you and it and and the, the wind stream hits here. you behind and you have your windows open, I said, Wow, then you deserve to get yeah, it. At you, that you, point, you that's what I was about. If your it. luck is that bad, you deserve to die. That, Absolutely. that that thing is fucking nasty. If that's if if it gets you like that, holy shit. Good luck. <laughs> you know, it's almost as bad as I saw this dude doing a cross crossword puzzle and it's doing 60 down the road next to me years ago <laughs> he's literally like d- flipping pages back and forth and writing ho- i guess holding the wheel with his knee and driving with the other one I'm like what are we doing out here I, it's almost as bad as that at this point just the people with the f- the masks the face shields every time i see somebody like that i go yo wh- wh- when's the kidney coming in when are you doing the transplant it's too much yeah but um <laughs> I, so I never get anyone to really talk about this with, so I have you two here. What do you guys think? So, I mean, it's, it's common knowledge that there are a lot of doctors that say the masks are absolutely fucking useless. They mm-hmm. don't do shit. Um, if anything, it's a buildup of germs in there because no one's washing their masks. No one's cleaning it. You leave it in your no, car, no. you go in the store. So you're actually increasing your, re- your risk of getting sick with other things. But mm-hmm. um, not only that, you're breathing in all that uh, CO. Um, so... How do you feel about the ones that say it, it, so? How come no one has challenged the fact that a lot of people are saying the masks actually don't do shit and they're just wearing it kind of like? Uh, I'll let John take 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 a little bit of this one to start yeah. with, but I also want to say I think that there are a lot of people challenging it, like really scientifically mm-hmm. challenging it, but they're getting suppressed in social media because of the algorithms that are that are blocking them from having their own opinion. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, I don't even think it's because there's tons of people challenging it. I'm sure plenty of plenty of professional doctors really challenging it, but. From a political standpoint, it's it's kind of like, hey, I'm not going to be the politician to say don't wear masks when my numbers go up immediately. So, kind of like a better safe than sorry. Hmm. I think they're I think they are helpful in their own uses. I think they're helpful in a grocery store. I think they're helpful where there's mass people. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that that's where it's more useful for the time being. I'm not, so not in s- your car. No, God, no. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and and say that uh, this is a this is the end all be all because I know it's not, and I know that in the year or two that no one's going to wear a fucking mask anymore because no one's going to already. No one gives a fuck at this right. point. How many mm-hmm. months into the five six months into this, everyone is really losing it. Not only losing it and just irritated and out and just projecting that anger out at one another, but they're just not caring about the agenda. They're there were if it's almost like an, if I get sick I get sick at this point. Mm-hmm. At this point, I'm not the first one getting sick because that's the really what you don't want to be. You don't want to be the first one getting sick because the first one getting sick with something that they don't know how to treat it. That's always the fuck the fuck numbers. Mm-hmm. The, that that's why early on I did stay home. I was like I don't yeah, want to be the first. I don't want to be the first thousand with this because then that's it. <laughs> Before we knew what we knew, yeah, it, it right. they were traking like a, people right. and really venting them when yeah. they just they walked in. They're like, I can breathe, but not trach them. Get them. Right. Yep. Like they don't know what they were doing, and you never want to be that in that bunch. So I think now where they have a better idea. I mean, there's a there's a there's a woman. She went to bed. She used to go to bed a long time ago, I believe. That's how I know her. Uh, I forget her name. Her her last name, but I posted a couple of things talking about COVID, this and that, and how. I think it's bullshit that everything's still shut down and mm-hmm. we have to get back to, back, back to life. Mm-hmm. Uh, she privately messaged me, which I was actually happy about, that she didn't just go on my page and start ranting and then, I, then all the people that agree with her, they, they like it in, in quiet. <laughs> they don't, they, you know, they don't want to like any, anything else. Um, <clears throat> and she said, you know, I think you have a very misunderstand, misunderstood perception of what this actually is. And she sent me her lung scans and she sent me everything. Totally fine. I said, listen, I am so sympathetic towards what you went through. And no one should have to go with what go through what you went through. I mean, she was on a she was on a vent. She was horrible, horrible. Oh, so you're saying she had it and then she went through all this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she sent me all of her information and this and that. I said I'm not disagreeing that it's a real thing. What I am disagreeing though is that if people are really that scared to get it, they need to stay home. They need right. to stay home yeah. for the next year. Yeah. I said, and I'm I also think that the same people that are banking on this extra six hundred dollars a, a, a month, which isn't happening now. I said, I think these are the same people that are telling, yelling at everybody, stay home. This is bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yep. You, need to, you need to protect me and my family. Why? Because you're getting extra money right now? Because like you're, you're lazy. Yeah. You're fucking comfy. That's what you are. You're comfy. Mm-hmm. You're sitting at home all day watching Hulu, and you're comfy. And when, when that shit stops, and now it's time to actually make money, and that mortgage is overdue, you're, you're going to change your stance from we need to all stay home to fuck it, we have to get out there, and everyone should be doing this. Mm-hmm. I mean, the full unemployment pay with the stimulus was, uh, if you, it depends on what you were making, but if you were making top dollar, you were getting a grand a week, which is probably more than what most people were making when they were working. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
And I, I don't think I think they did just approve of four hundred too. So now you're getting four hundred plus on yeah. Which mm-hmm. I mean, listen, it is what it is. People, I, I listen. People like people like John that have been out of work for so long and haven't been able to open their gym. Mm-hmm. I get absolutely. Thro- that's the person that I that I want to take advantage of that extra real money. Quick, though is they made this whole blanket statement when they made the unemployment, basically saying, look, no matter what, we're going to try to just make sure everybody's okay, right? But for whatever reason, me owning my own gym, I never actually set myself up as an employee from the gym. Meaning, I never technically paid myself through my. You own never had gym. a W two, so you couldn't collect right, it, right? Yeah, right. Okay. So even though I owned my own gym, you shut my business down. I can't collect unemployment because mm-hmm. I was never hired by myself. Ugh. Yeah. If that that would be, and that's a real person, and that's a real person, I want to collect the extra six hundred, not just because he's a friend of mine, but because right. he's actually struggling. That would be the first person they should say, "Okay, this is a gray area. We got to make sure that's okay." Were they offering any? I, I didn't look into it, but uh, small business owners like you were they doing any bailouts or any like uh, anything close to? They did that loan that, that did which the, I took. It, I took advantage of that loan too. Yeah, well, you guys, can you guys ask Kelly why she didn't take advantage of that loan? <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. She didn't come on the podcast. I don't know. I guess. Yeah, that was it. Too yeah, she didn't to come on the podcast. <laughs> Everyone else I know took advantage of it. I, I, dude, I signed up for that instantly. I just knew. Why wouldn't you? I, well, I knew. Yeah. I knew you could you could consolidate any bin, any business debt, and it's not due for over a year. Like Absolutely. You don't, you don't start mm-hmm. making payments for a year, and so. it's forgivable yeah. at the end of the day too. If you really can't pay it, I believe they forgive it. No, yeah. I hope so. You yeah. know, nice. For me, um, we were filing lower taxes for the gym, mm-hmm. and uh, I filed for it in March. Right, we got approved at like the middle of June for forty three hundred dollars in a loan. Okay. With a business that we're not allowed to keep open. So that would have been great, a month's expenses. Right. What about the whole entire rest of the, the year so far? Where, what, what the fuck do we do? Right, yeah. You know what it, I mean? That covers one month of rent and some other shit and nothing. Yeah. What do you do in the next four months? Exactly. Right. So should we just go belly up? Or, you know, what's, what's the game plan here, guys? Mm-hmm. You see all these gyms and small studios going out of business now. It's crazy. You see the ones in New Jersey, uh, what is it? Uh, Bel- um, uh, Atlas? Att- yeah. Attilas? Attilas, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bel- Belmar, right down there. I mean, I, I don't think even, or did they release anything in New Jersey about Jim's opening? So he's going to be fighting that, for, they're going to be fighting that there. Yeah, for a while. you know what? I was yeah. talking to a few people. He's got, now he's got the first form guys behind him, and he's got uh, Seth Faros behind him. I don't think he's going to lose, I think he's going to win whatever it oh, is. Oh, thousand percent. But, but he's, I think, I believe he's got enough marketing dollars and money behind him for the time being to, Continue to stay open and fight this because mm-hmm. now it's becoming a patriotic thing. Now right, it's, right, right. It's it's not yeah. about it's not about just having a gym to work out at. Now it's like you're suppressing a business owner and you're being a dick mm-hmm. and you're continually overstepping what you're allowed to actually do. So now it's more along the lines of ethical. Like right. how, what are you? At what point do we revolt against what they're what they're suppressing mm-hmm. us with? I'm telling you, it was getting close with Cuomo, man. I, I'm talking to all the gym owners, including yeah. yeah. It, it it was it's right at that point, man, where if you didn't do something. Things were going to get real, real nasty quick. Well, would he have would he have opened it up if that wasn't going on in Jersey right now? A thousand percent, no. No, right? Mm-hmm. So. No. Well, it's a lawsuit that it opened it up. He didn't want the next little scandal on him. He didn't even want to. He didn't want to have a conversation about gyms. Yeah. Now De Blasio not. isn't even isn't even uh, opening gyms in the city. In the city, right? So now right, we're going to have all the fucking yeah. city people rushing out to Long Island to, to hit the gyms at thirty three percent capacity. Which, by the way, because I was talking with Arash about this yesterday, uh, I saw him. Um, Bev's at 33% capacity. I mean, because everyone keeps texting me. Not not to go too off topic, but everyone keeps yeah, texting yeah. me. Oh, I can't wait to be back at Bev's next week. And I'm like, I don't think you're just going to be walking into Bev's yeah. and doing no. your work. People have been messaging me that. too. What's the Bev's capacity period? I, someone told me it was 250. Yeah, so. So 80 people. But I mean, how many? It's so hard to tell that gym's so big how many people are in there at once. But I mean, people think they're going to walk in at the four o'clock rush hour and just go no, in. No, you're not. It's going to have to be appointment based. Yeah, 80, Our, 82 and a half people. So we have to hope a midget comes through. <laughs> and you got the staff there. So you take away five people or so. I mean, you got 70, yeah. roughly 75 people. But, uh, I mean, without time slots, how do you have, Steve's going to do it by the book. I think he's... he's, he's Steve's Steve, not going to fuck around. He's not going to fuck around at all. So he's going to do it right, which means time slots. And, I mean, you know, you got all those diehard old people there, like the old hard, hardcore mm-hmm. people. They're going to line up to do it. Um, you got the people that, you know, I think we've all... I've had access to gyms here. We've all been kind of lucky because we're in the fitness industry. Absolutely. Um, but others who haven't been able to literally work out in six months other than some curls at their house, I mean, they're going to be clawing to get in there. I told mm-hmm. people, you, you should sign up for a small plan of fitness or retro the first month or two. Let it die down because you're not walking into bed. no problem on Monday next week, the 24th. Yeah. So. Not a chance. Yeah. yeah, a couple people have messaged me about that too. They said, what do you think Bev's is going to do? And I said, I-, I have no idea to be honest with you. I said, but I said, there's a lot of people that have not bit right. the bullet and bought mm-hmm. their own equipment like I did. Mm-hmm. You know, I have so many people message me, oh, 
You're so lucky you have that gym equipment. I'm not lucky. I spent a lot of money for this shit. Mm-hmm. There's no right. fucking luck in it. I bought it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I got to use it now. Like, yeah. I have no excuse whether that's to walk downstairs or to drive to Bev's, which is, ironically is only five, ten minutes away from my house. But I have no excuse. So they're all asking me, what are you going to do? Are you going to go back to the gym? Yeah, I'm going to go back to the gym. Am I going to go back the first day? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll find an off hour to just go there and support Steve and just right. say, mm-hmm. hey, I'm here. I'm here for you guys. I wrote that on their post yesterday. I love you guys. I miss you. I, I can't wait to come support. Just because I bought all my own equipment doesn't mean I'm not going to go. But it also does mean that now I don't have to go regularly. I don't mm-hmm. have to be there every single day, two, three hours, because I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to have the time to do that. I, I think it's going to be one hour slots. And I, I think so. And I think they're yeah. only going to they're only going to allow, like you said, <clears throat> maybe. Maybe it'll be a, a maybe it'll be an hour and a half, two hour slot for the first eighty that sign up, and then the next day, you know what I'm saying? Or or the, or the first, I don't even think they're gonna max it out. I think he's gonna do like fifty, yeah, 50, 40 people in the, in the gym at a time because mm-hmm. they said in that post they're gonna do social distancing as well. Right. Yeah. 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 And the gym is big, but but it's not. You know that dumbbell area gets filled quick, and mm-hmm. so does the leg room. And you know, it's just their um their occupancy is so big because of the Panza, where it's big and open, mm-hmm. right? Cardio huge and open, and the leg area. Where it's all these big extra jagged spots, but in reality, most of the people are cluttered in one or two, three places. Right, right. You know, they're either by the big jungle gym or by the dumbbells. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Besides that, it's pretty spread out to begin with. Right. Um, I, didn't, I don't even know how, like, you're going to be able to pick it. Like, I wonder if you just sign up and they give you the slot. Like, they say, hey, you're going at 8 o'clock tonight. You know, it's so hard. Imagine every day ha- having to organize that. It's going like, to be, it's gonna be horrible. And, I mean, yeah. you know what? There, there are apps that they could probably use. Um, I don't, you know, there's but an no. app that I use for my business that helps me track time, mm-hmm. and that time helps me bill clients accordingly. Like, oh, we said the job was going to be eight hours. Well, I shot you for 20 hours, you know, mm-hmm. and it was two separate days. So it helps me just keep a track on mine. But I believe there's a way through that app to, I don't know, like to have have slots where you can fill for, uh, you know, have a calendar wise. It's yeah, gonna, maybe if you get the. It's whole gonna be bar. like a studio. It's it's gonna right. it's gonna be like a like a yeah. small fitness studio. Like you sign up for twenty people for the morning class, twenty people mm-hmm. for the afternoon class, twenty people for the night class. The night nighttime is going to be fucked in there. Uh-huh. It is horrible. You mean like the uh, the nighttime the rush late afternoon? Yeah, oh, yeah. I can't imagine. Oh you know, yeah, it's that is the most anti mask, anti all of this place I can possibly think of. So when you're having people say like, no, I'm not like you know, fuck this, fuck that, not gonna wear a mask. He's, people are going to be thrown out left and right. Yeah, Steve's oh, Steve's not going to play that phone around. Take that. They have That's too much of a good brand name built where they're going to let something like that mess anything up. Yeah, he's and not going to. He's going to do it strictly by the book. Absolutely right. Because yeah. he has to. Yeah, and exactly. He's not going to fuck around. Yeah. No. If they, look, if they were going to fuck around, they would have been open the whole time. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? But those doors were they sealed shut. They never shut. They were sealed shut. Yeah, I only know of like a few like in and out like renovations moving equipment that mm-hmm. they did but besides that it was done like there was nothing going mm-hmm. on in there which i mean listen i'm glad they did that because th- that's the last place that we really want to have any issues right <clears throat> that's that's really for a lot of us our second home i mean we yeah. we spent so much time there whether that and that whether that time is going to continue to be a lot of time there in the next year while things start to get back to somewhat normalcy or whether it's like in past, like you, how many hours? How many hours have you fucking spent in that gym? Uh, between the two areas, I was at the store and Bev's. I was, yeah. I was there every day. Yeah, man. So it's every just day. you. You have a you have a some type of a connection there, and right. you know, I, I was talking to a few friends. They're gonna cancel all their gym memberships. They're not Bev's, Crunch, Planet Fitness. Mm-hmm. These 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 big box gyms are gonna have a huge problem. Lifetimes. Fuck, you're gonna pay 120 dollars a month, 150 dollars a month for a lifetime when you're not even allowed in there full time. Right. Mm-hmm. I think I think that's what's really gonna you know this is the rise of home gyms and rise of small stu- small you know specialized gyms like powerlifting like Bev's those types of places are gonna be like, like John's gym yeah yes like yeah. private Absolutely. training yeah. facilities yeah. private mm-hmm. training facility where I mean he's moving and they're gonna be getting a new facility so right. it's it, it, a better facility yeah. so it's yeah. sure. there's a lot of moving parts but I think that in all everybody that went all in on this the dividends are gonna pay off in the in the long run. And these big gyms that came in and thought they were going to box out the little guys, they're the ones in trouble. Right now, they're, they're definitely in trouble. They're all screwed. Because gyms in general, at you know as much capacity as possibly run, there was so much competition where none of them were really making ends meet. Mm-hmm. You know, They had to complete with the Planet Fitnesses and the LA Fitness that were charging you know, 10 to 30 bucks a month, getting these people out so they could take their members and finally turn green. You know, A lot of these places, they're, like I said, just making ends meet and they're scraping by profits with PT. Now with thirty three percent capacity, 
uh, none of them are going to be able to make the, their bills. Yeah. So it's, it's great, tough. we're open. Congrats. By the way, spend all this money. Uh, make sure you don't fuck it up. If you fuck up one thing, you know we're going to give you a fine. Mm-hmm. And now you're just still in the red. But now you're allowed to be in the red. Right. Well, that's that's part of the crazy thing is is uh, gyms have to pass uh, an inspection. Mm-hmm. So now is that a now you I don't know if you know this because you maybe looked into it more than I did. Yep. Is it a weekly inspection? Is it a month a biweekly? What it, it's just an inspection to open. It's a one time within the week or two to yeah. open, right? Like they said, the twenty fourth or whatever. To 24th, September 28th, something. The September second is uh the week span where you have like I think apparently you have to be open by the second. Right. Which is weird. So Isn't you need that to funny that they're forcing you to be open now? It's like, no, yeah. you gotta, gotta get back in there. Get the fuck in there. Yeah, you all want to be open? Let's see how you like being open. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's Meanwhile, like places can't... They've already been in the red. They can't afford to spend more money right. on whatever extra things they need. Yeah, the HVAC integrate... What, what is that? Apparently, they're relatively cheap. But That's the air system? Yeah. I heard it was expensive, so it, so it is cheap? I think it depends what you already have installed. At some points, you need a whole new system. At some points, you might just need a new filter. <laughs> I mean, they didn't put filters in any restaurants or bars or supermarkets. Of course they did. That's why they're open. Of course they did. (laughs) Right? They they passed inspections, right? You know? Cuomo fries, you can't eat you can't you're not allowed to have fries with your with your drink, but (laughs) you got that's not substantial food. That's my favorite thing that came out of this whole pandemic. Cuomo fries, I love that. That was great. That was great. He's he's fine fuck you fries for a dollar. He stated that you have to have food if you're gonna sit at you're gonna be at a bar and drink. All well, the bar said, oh, no, Cuomo chips. That's what they yeah, were. Yeah, that's what they were. Oh, they they just funny. put a dollar. Here you go. Here's <laughs> chips. They're out there. And then he said, no, chips are not a good food source. You need to have a, like a meal, like a sandwich. It's like, what a douchebag. That, that way you don't get corona? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Okay. Just, it's the same logic that goes through when you walk into the restaurant, you need the mask. But when you sit down, you're clear. You're good. The virus doesn't get you. you know, and you take your mask off. But I've when the, you walk to the bathroom. The, that's the dumbest thing. It has to be. When you walk yeah. to the bathroom, got to have the mask on again. I was at a New York Burger Bar in Massapequa. It was me and one other person, literally in the whole fucking building. <laughs> and we walked in. She didn't have her mask on, so I had an extra one in the car or whatever. Gave it to her, walked through the empty restaurant to the table, and then took them off. Which I get it from their side of it in the sense of if one of us was one of the, like, rat people, mm-hmm. then we could have called in be like, one hey. Of, one of the rat people. The rat people. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just feel like I've done so many stupid things in life. Like, the dumbest thing has been putting on a mask to walk to my table to take it off the eat. It's, yes. It's, it's, it's yeah. up there. It's up there. I'm cutting. It's like assless chaps. I'm going to be cutting a flap out of my mask now. And I'm just going <laughs> to I'm gonna just shove the food in my mouth like that. And then I'm going to close the flap with, like, a button. That's, so the, that's basically the best way to do it. Then they get mad at you. Well, the button has holes. you got to sew it shut every time. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a picture of somebody. It was a, it was like a bodybuilder dude, but you know, he was it wasn't a legit bodybuilder. He was walking around BJ's and like just a speedo and a mask on. Like, <laughs> you want me to be clean? Fine, I have the mask on. We're all good. Don't yeah, worry about good. it. We're all good. Don't worry about everything else on my body. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, it's going to be interesting. I, is there any estimate that you think for things to become? Well, now here's the here's the thing that they're pushing. The new narrative they're pushing is this is the new normal. Like, do you really buy into that, or do you think, that, like well, I said, people are just going to be, at some point, just fuck it, they're not wearing the shit anymore? It has to come a time, man. I mean, I, what I meant to even bring up before, I forgot what we were talking about. The, does anyone remember when this all started? It was supposed to be two weeks? Yes. Yep. 14 Th- days. Does everyone forget that? Curve, it was supposed curve to be two weeks to, curve it. to just to let the uh, <laughs> hospitals catch up, because the media was scaring everyone. So if you coughed, you ran to the hospital. So uh, obviously, beds were filling up, and mm-hmm. uh, ventilators were being taken, because someone with a simple cough, and they, they look at the news, every, you know, your average person, they're running to the ER or to the doctor, the hospital, and, uh, you know, so we, whatever. I understood the two-week thing, you know, let the hospitals catch up. So what sure. happened in Italy wouldn't, ca- wouldn't happen here, right? Because in Italy, same thing happened there, but they weren't medically equipped to deal with it. And what happened was they, was just, they couldn't take in people in the hospitals. It was, mostly, it was mostly the old The old dying. people were dying, yeah. and there's a lot of old people in Italy. They live long there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so then two to three weeks later, I think a month later, you know, so what happened? What, why are we here six months later and we just got the gyms at 33% capacity? That's what I'm saying. It, it be, it, there, there's so so many weird things at work. And now there was an article yesterday that I read and I sent it to my mom. I just with, with the caption, I just said sick. It's uh, There's a new mutation of the coronavirus oh. in Malaysia and Thailand that's circulating right now that's more up to 10 times more infectious than what we're currently dealing with. How convenient when we're right. just bouncing back. <laughs> How convenient for that to come. It's only going to last till November, though. So yeah, right. I was going to say, that when one election has an comes up, date. in another month or two, uh, November election times, I think there might be five more of those viruses. So yeah, we'll probably. That, um, that's why I got the home gym. Everyone just come over. We'll just squat at the house, you know? What do you think is going to happen in October this year for trick-or-treaters? Oh, God. Uh, werewolves. That. That's, that's gonna werewolves be. are coming out. 
I didn't even think the the the, what, the media will have a field day with that day. I can imagine, right? Oh, you're saying? Oh, I I thought like, you meant like what's, hey, the, next, me what's go, the next ploy? Oh, like, you're let me saying? Let go to every stranger's house on the block and collect something. I yeah. think this is gonna be the first year that people aren't trick or treating, really trick or treating. But they'll actually have a mask on. <laughs> That's yeah, true. They, yeah, they, they will have a mask, mask on. on. But you can't. Say you're only allowed to dress up as a goose, a ghost. You can't be a pirate. <laughs> so now, if I had a kid though, as a parent, I would be I would be concerned in some capacity that they're taking random things from people's homes that you don't know. That's where it becomes kind of sketchy, where I don't want to fall into the ploy of I'm so scared of this thing, but you have to be kind of cautious and go, go into each person's bowl outside, touching each new person that you've never been around before. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be, at some point you want this to just fucking go away. You want it to just stop in its tracks. I don't believe it's ever going to. I think it's here to stay now like a common cold and like a flu. I think we're going to be stuck like this for a, a pretty long time. Yeah. In yeah. fact, I didn't think gyms would even remotely open until January 2021. That's when he thought. That's, that's what I was, that's what I I was mean, thinking. I'm surprised even. I thought he was just going to give guidelines yesterday about uh, how to reopen them but not give a date. But I was shocked he gave a date. He had to give a date or that lawsuit would have torn him a new one. When's that lawsuit? It's like next week, right? That was, no, that was this Thursday. That's in two days. Oh, it's, uh, it's still So we going. covered it's still... him Monday to Thursday because, hold on, you know what? The numbers aren't too different from last week, so I'm just going to wait until the week of the fucking lawsuit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey guys, by the way, Mr. Superhero here. Yeah, well, that's why I see everybody commenting that it's, uh, <clears throat> that it's like, oh, so great of him. He's been so oh, good yeah, this whole wow. thing. He gave us back our rights. That's, that's pretty awesome. I'm like, wow, really? Thanks. Wow, you guys, you must, uh, you must really have your head up your ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you must really just not know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> But anyway. You locked me in your basement for six months, but hey, you let me out. What a yeah, guy. Wow, what a good guy, right? <laughs> what a guy. But anyway, we could talk about <laughs> we could talk about that asshole for, for a long time. I kind of want to get into Big Linden. Something yeah. of value. Yeah, so something of, of substance and value. Um, sure. So John, as everybody that's been on, Bev's, mm -hmm. Bev's alum. Right. That's it. Uh, I want to know what got you into bodybuilding, because you, to me, have always had a phenomenal physique, mm -hmm. and I think over the years, you've just improved it. Right. Every year, you've looked better. I mean- Fucking sick right now, and like a couple yeah. weeks ago when I saw you when you opened the store too, right, like yeah, yeah, I had to shoot, so I had to I had to get right. I was this like, is probably oh. the best I've been in a while, actually. Like, oh my god, you yeah. look great. Um, well, I I had had a lot of free time, which we'll, we'll go into a little bit, but I've had a lot more free time to kind of do what I want. I have I'm lucky to have access to a uh, um, a private gym that you know I'm not you know it's not open to the public. It's just mm -hmm. open to me, and um, I've been able to train and do what I want to do, and I have a lot more time now, so I've been able to get really uh, back into good shape with no distractions and. Um, Running my own business makes it easier than uh, obviously running it with someone or working for someone else. So that's that's a good uh, plus. Um, you know, I've always weightlifted. Um, to be honest, I think the first show I did, Nick, it was you know, so no one really knows this, but Nick was like one of the original competitors at Bev. So like mm -hmm. he's been he's been there since like twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Um, I didn't get to Bev's until probably two thousand fifteen. So I had already competed, but you know, I've always grew up just weightlifting. You know, back, um, I'm, I'm older than you guys, so. How much? Not by much. Uh, I'm 30. No, oh, two, two years older than me. You're We're not going to talk. He's, well, he, he's, he's like, like 24. He's like yeah, 18 I'm years old. Okay. <laughs> um, My sweet 16 is next that's, week. That's why, we, <laughs> that's why we keep all the alcohol over here away from <laughs> John. We don't want him to have an access to it. Because Cuomo will kick the fucking door in. Does he have a drink? Is he, is, does he have food? Is he old enough? I have enough? a sandwich. We're all right. <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. Um... You know, when I grew up, uh, I was way before social media. So in high school, middle school, when you worked out, it was kind of like, oh, he's, he works out. He's big. That's weird. You know, you're weird. You're a freak. Um, now social media glamorizes it. If you were, I, I can't, I, I see all these young kids are all at Bev's even. Um, they're all even competing in teens. You see the teen shows now, they're huge. Um, but back then, it wasn't really like that. Um, I was probably the only kid in my school that worked out um, like uh, as dedicatedly as I did. And I don't know what really got me into it. I wasn't good at sports. I'm not very coordinated. Uh, I don't have too many great motor skills to make me good for sports. I was just... <laughs> He's like, but I can lift this deadlift up pretty I, right, well. I can I lift heavy. Shit. I was very strong. Yeah. And uh, I guess I had good genetics too, good shape. And, you know, it, it transferred over to my body. And by senior year of high school, I was probably already 200, 205 pounds lean. So now were you, were you skinnier or were you a heavier kid when you were younger? You know, I don't know because when I started at 14, I was just average. Okay. So mm -hmm. I never really got to see, like, all right, you know, you grew up to be 18, 20, this, you know, you're a little fat now, you're a little skinny. I never got to see it because I've been right. lifting since I was 13, 14 um, and eating healthy. So I, I don't know. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. That's all right. Dude, <laughs> you're saying you didn't have the great motor skills. You were. Oh, yeah. So, so that ended up getting sports. me into it. Um, and I was getting into my early 20s. That's when uh, 
that's when they implemented the uh, men's physique and women's bikini division. So it started getting more popular. And I always said, I'm not going to be a bodybuilder. That's kind of weird, putting on the trunks and stuff. <laughs> yeah. so, the mankini. Right. <laughs> and then men's physique came out. I'm like, you know what? That's kind of cool. Because, you know, I never thought I'd be good enough to do bodybuilding. So I'm like, you know, this is kind of cool. I saw guys like Sadiq, Matt Acton, the original guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick was a was a early men's physique competitor. I remember him at one of my shows. I was. Yeah. Um, I'm like, let me, let me give that a stab. So I think in 2013... At that point, I was probably like 220, 230 pounds lean. I'm like, I'm not, I can't, I'm not good enough to do bodybuilding in my head. So uh, what was the show called? They actually, you can't even find a record of it now, uh, if you remember it, Nick. Was it in New York? Yeah, it was the Hudson Valley show, NPC Hudson Valley. There was maybe like 25 competitors there. I guess they got rid of it. It didn't have a good showing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually competed in men's physique that day and got dead last, not because of how I looked, but because of how I looked, if that makes <laughs> sense. Um, are you too big? Yeah, they, they looked at me and they're like, yeah, we didn't even judge you. We didn't, <laughs> there's no, there's, you, you could have did bodybuilding in one today. I'm like, really? Bodybuilding? Like, I, I just didn't see myself as a bodybuilder. It just wasn't in your train of thought. Yeah, because I always looked at myself and thought I had a clean shape. I'm like, they don't, you know, these bodybuilders are freaks. I don't, you know? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But we're always our worst critics. We always look at ourselves in the mirror. I mean, I remember when I was shredded. I was shredded for my show. Mm-hmm. And I just look in the mirror and I'm like, yo, dude, you are not going to the beach, bro. You still look like shit. And I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I didn't go to the beach that entire summer. I should have. I fucking should have capitalized on it. I had abs for the first time in my whole life. Right. <laughs> I should have went to the beach. <laughs> but I, I, you just, you, it's weird because you just see yourself in a different light that nobody else can see. So even though you thought that you weren't ready for bodybuilding, you probably were. I actually had, mm-hmm. it's not even, so not only did I think I wasn't ready, I had no interest. Gotcha. I had no interest yeah. to go up yeah. in trunks. And then, just something about getting last. I'm like, fuck this. I'm doing this show or whatever show is around this time next year. And I'm going to do bodybuilding. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the placing I deserved. And, that's, and then 2014, the next year it came. I think it was a South Jersey show that same weekend. And I won. Right? So I mm-hmm. won my class. I won the novice overall. I came up short in the open overall. I'm to actually a really good competitor. Um, and I'm like, all right, that's more like it. You know, that's what I deserved. I got nationally qualified. I got all the trophies. It was great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also knew, like, all right, well, I want a bodybuilding show, but, you know, I, I kind of have that mindset that's different from today's generation where I still need two to three years off if I want to even do remotely well on a national circuit. This doesn't mean I, I deserve my pro card, you know? Right. So I'm like, this, this is nowhere close. And I was already like 23, 24 at the time. I'm like, no, no, I need to wait till like my mid, late 20s. Like, I'll, I'll get killed out this there. This is before they handed out 200 of them at a show. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, shit. Um, so I remember taking two years off, uh, at least two years off. And that's when Classic Physique came out. And that's when I kind of thought like, you know what, this might be the best fit between men's physique and bodybuilding, kind of a hybrid division. And it kind of was when it came out. Now they're very big again. They kind of increased the they weight. Lo- they kind of yeah. lost that, uh, that classic look. Right. They, mm-hmm. they, they increased it since it started 10 pounds. So, I mean, that, that's huge. And, you know, when the 202 went to 212, those 10 pounds uh, made a huge difference. Huge. Oh, yeah. So um, you guys saw Kevin English go from winning every show to, yeah. you know, to mm-hmm. flex, the rise of Flex Lewis, right? So. Um, those 10 pounds make a difference and it, it made a, it made a big difference in what you see today in the pro ranks. Um, but yeah, I ended up, uh, winning the overall, the first ever Atlantic States classic fi- uh, physique. Mm. Uh, the next month I got my, uh, pro card at the universe and it was a good year. Um, and that's kind of, uh, what solidified me at Bev's. I decided to stay at Bev's cause you know, I was really only there to train for the shows. Um, and then I was also with Total at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was, it was a good gig. I had both going on at the same time. Yeah, it was easy. You work and then you just walk over. Right. And um, I, knew, I knew the same crowd, the same. So not, so you asked me before, you know, how, how, long, how much were you at Bev's every day? So even if I wasn't at Bev's, <clears throat> the same people from Bev's would come over to see me next door. Mm-hmm. So I saw the same people two to three times a day, sometimes every day. For years. For yeah. years. For at least three years, yeah. So You would just come over and say hi before they left. What happened? Even if somebody just came over to say hi before they left. Yeah, that's sometimes yeah. they just come and What's eat up? a meal and leave. Yeah. Just say hi. Yeah, I, I did that a couple times. Yeah, you I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Stop by, set what up, you know, a little pre-workout. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, a little, little, little RTD, just slam that shit mm-hmm. down and get, and get ready to go I annihilate some it. shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, listen, when it comes down to it, we, we, you know, we all know whether, whether you do your own thing, whether you split off and you do another thing, whatever it might be, you wind up supporting the people, not necessarily the business. And that's what I learned. And that happens. Sure. Yeah. And that happens a lot with me too, with, mm-hmm. with with videos. I mean, although people like my work and 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 I and I get a lot of questions and people hitting me up because they want stuff done, when it comes down to it, the grand scheme of things, people like to work with me, you know, not to toot my own horn, but they like to work with me because they know I'm going to be able to shoot on time, I'm going to plan, I'm going to get everything that we mm-hmm. need and mm-hmm. and we're going to we're going to have a good time doing this. It's not going to be uh 
a rookie situation where things aren't thought of or this and that. And same thing with you, man. You know, now you're doing your own thing, and right. I think that's fucking great. Yeah. I, I I'm I'm super pumped for you. I wear the shirt all the time when I'm training in my yeah. garage. I got I got to take a mid mid workout, little little half sweat. I got to get a little more better shape though. I got to take a half sweaty, you know, model face across the across the rack and be like classic sports nutrition. <laughs> I appreciate the support. Yeah, yeah dude. I, so let me let's get into the business side. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, obviously, you were total for a long time. Right. So you knew the supplement industry. You knew as a supplement store owner. Yes. So I started at Total about a year after it was. So Total, the ownership of Total has changed at least since I've been there anyway, two to four times. Um, so I started there as a part time part time thing. I was in school, mm-hmm. actually going for accounting, and I did end up working my way up to a store, uh, part store owner. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was there I made the connections not only with the vendors but with you guys mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, it's kind of like you you sell your uh, shooting business right, mm-hmm. uh, and you start your own uh, another one. Let's say. People are going to hit you up. They're not going to go back and hit up Rizzo Productions. They're going to go. Yeah. They're yeah. going to go follow exactly. whatever new company which, you have. Which is why the branding was so important to me in the beginning. You know, mm-hmm. when I was thinking of a production company name, mm-hmm. you know, you could do so and so films, so and so production, so and so whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, everyone knows me as Rizzles. Like everyone knows me right. as the nicknames and that. It's my license plate on my fucking car. Like mm-hmm. everyone just knows Rizzles. And I have people that call me Rizzles without even saying Nick. So right, for yeah. me, that makes more sense to continue the branding forward, and then I don't have to change my, you know, then I can still use my personal page as my art, my art collection. Because it's you, right? It's yeah. just Nikki Rizzles, and it's mm-hmm. like Rizzles Productions. It's two in, it's hand in hand. So you're a thousand percent correct. It's like the branding of what you are. So, so the voice of Rizzles. Yeah, the voice exactly. Of yeah. John's voice. Can't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, people, people say that they're the, the voice. They just I'm like, what's up? I'll, <laughs> I'll never forget the first time I heard you speak. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> The first time you came into the store, you said something like, what the fuck? All the, all, all the tubs of protein. I felt, like, I felt like half a man around. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> all the tubs of protein fell off the shelves. <laughs> that was it. Um, but I guess also, it, you know, sometimes uh, I'm like, damn, I can't believe I stayed there for so long, so unhappy, and I wasn't doing my own thing like I should have. Then I realized, I, without realizing it, I was establishing my uh, following and my clientele, which was mm-hmm. really establishing my branding. because Literally building day, a book of business. Exactly, because yeah. I got up and left, and... Dude, I can't believe it. Like, I opened the first... Okay, first of all, when I left, <laughs> this was in the heart of uh, the pandemic, right? So this is when, like, we still thought you could touch something and get corona or whatever. We didn't know what was going on, right? People were hitting me up. I'm not going to Total, so I'm waiting for you. So eventually... Mm. So I was already dissolved my partnership from Total. I had nothing to do with them. I was unemployed. Um, so I started ordering supplements and just selling it. Because people were like, I'd rather meet up with you in the middle of the rain, in the middle of this pandemic, but I need your advice. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to take. I need. I have a few questions about nutrition and training. You're a pro. You know what to. Do. You know. I need. I at the, end, at the mm-hmm. end of the day, there's a big difference between talking to you know Kelly and talking to you. Right. And and you know, it's, I, I'm trying to stay neutral just to just to try, just to try to be nice. Well, you remember la- what happened to you two last time? You said something about. Well, yes. Yeah, it wasn't so even so us. Be careful. It wasn't like, even our fault. It wasn't even us. Yeah, that was, that was great. <laughs> but it's a sales clerk versus an expert. Yes. Right. In yes. a situation. Yes. It's someone it's who go- it's someone who owns the business and not necessarily is enveloped in the the entirety of sports nutrition, bodybuilding has taken all the supplements on the shelves. Wait, you know, it's like going to it's like going to Facebook for medical advice instead of talking to your doctor. Wait, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> uh, you know what? If you think you can, you probably should. <laughs> I would do but okay. natural selection run its course a little bit. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so say your thing. But yeah, I, yeah. listen, I'm not. When it comes down to it, I want you to say exactly what what. In the entirety of what you feel and what ha- what actually wound up happening, it, mm-hmm. it is what it is. Right, shit right. happens. Partnerships dissolve. People yeah. don't want to be around one another anymore. And in your case, you've gone and created something that's really special for you and the people that you have made connections for. Absolutely. That's fucking amazing. That's mm-hmm. awesome. That's what it's all about. And people that are dedicated to Total, they'll still go there. But that's also not the people that you want targeted to come to you. Right. It's not really my target audience anyway. It's going to be look at the end of the day. There's always going to so without. I like to tell people without me, that store is just basically GNC or Vitamin Shop, right? What's the novelty there other than it's there and I need something and it's two minutes from the gym. So that store will mm-hmm. always. And I listen. I built that store up when I was there. We were lucky. So when I first got there, we would be lucky to do. We were doing under twenty grand a month. Um, when I left there, when I built it up over the years, I got it to sixty grand a month. Awesome. That, 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 yeah. that company, you know, the store almost makes a million a year in sales. So um, it won't, it's not going to be any more. Um, we're anywhere close to that. I can guarantee you that. But at one point, it was making. You know, it, when I was there at its peak, when I was owning it, it, mm-hmm. it did it did do very well. It's well, that's like in anything in any mm-hmm. business. That you know, how many videographers don't know what the fuck they're doing. You know, how many videographers hit me up on a daily basis. How much should I be charging for a video? 
and I, I don't mind answering these questions, but right. I also have to explain to them that if you're charging $100, $200 a shoot, you're fucking everybody. I right. want you to know that. You're fucking all of us because you're showing that that's an acceptable rate when it's not. When it's not to go somewhere, shoot, edit, get everything together, and, do, and, and deliver all these items. That is not an acceptable rate for something like that. Maybe if you first start... And it's your like third shoot, right? You got to work uh-huh. your way up. But yeah. that, but that's like that's the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's like I have to, uh, I almost have to coach these people and tell them like this is not okay. And what you're doing trickles down to me because then people go, well, this kid will shoot it for this, and I go, then go to him. They go to you. They don't like the job, then they come back to me and they're like, "Well, can you give me a break? Because I already paid for one. I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah. you could have came with me the first fucking time. Right, so, right. And that happens a lot. Uh huh. Or fucking trainers. Every other gym you walk into oh, in I'm the sure, world. I'm sure you get it. Yeah. Nobody right. has anything to do with what they're doing. Right, yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? But the worst thing is, say there's a client with uh, genuine health conditions, like they just had surgery. It's, it's a really specific niche client. Mm-hmm. They'll go with the random trainer they found that says, oh, yeah, I can do it, no problem. <laughs> they right. get hurt. And now their idea of we're ever working with a coach or a trainer ever again is over. It's tainted. Because of one fucking dick. They run it for everyone, right? Exactly. Yeah. He charges a hundred. I'll, I'll give it to you for thirty. He's just scamming you. He's no idea what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And then they break your back. And oh well, you know I don't know. Sorry, I'm not giving you money back. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, have any friends you, that want a trainer. <laughs> the fitness community is definitely an interesting one. There's a ton of people making money on shit they don't know. They have no idea what they're doing, right? Mm-hmm. Well, everybody who's ever done a show is an online coach. Oh right? yeah, well, <laughs> social media, right? Yep. <laughs> oh, I could be a coach. I can start coding. You, you, you competed you, more times than most people. You that's could. true. I could actually. Could. And yeah. I do know macros, so I could actually yeah. probably do Just knowing stuff. that, you're better than half of them. All right, <laughs> guys. You heard it here. Rizzles Fitness. We got this. I'm going to get you on the macro plan. We're going to hit all John Meadows workouts. Done. We in. <laughs> that's basically it. It's a rebranded Little Meadows. <laughs> I like that. John Meadows would like that, too. He's a good guy. He would. He's yeah. the shit. I can't wait yeah. to get Well, we were supposed to get him on, but there were a lot of people we were supposed to get on this summer, but we were supposed yeah. to get John on and a bunch of other people, so, it, you know. As things kind of continue to unfold and the people start to come back into town and right. whatnot, we'll, we'll we'll start you know lining them all up. Right. Um, so now, when you when you decide to make the split off and dissolve the ownership, so I actually um, so what what happened here? So it was actually the beginning of Corona, right? So business dropped dropped to almost zero, right? Because no one wanted to leave their house. When mm-hmm. you, as soon as they closed Bev's gym, no one wanted to, no one left their house. Um, yeah. Unless it was go to the supermarket, I think I'm trying to remember. I think there was even restrictions on that. Like you couldn't get. Oh no, you just couldn't get food at the supermarket. Like yeah, you were only allowed a certain. You were only allowed yeah. a certain amount. And I I used to go every night at eleven o'clock, uh, at ten o'clock at uh, Stop, Stop and Shop in around the corner. View? Yeah, yeah. The, in the Country Point, the really the nice one. Mm-hmm. I used to go there ten nine ten o'clock every night. Fucking nothing. Nobody yeah, there. Yeah, there's nothing there. No, yeah. but the, it was packed because they packed the shelves for the next morning. So oh. <laughs> I would go dead last in the night right, right. before they closed. Grab everything I needed and just be out. And they already sanitized mm. everything, so it was perfect. I was like, oh, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely don't miss those times. They're following you around with a spray bottle. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Clean everything again. God damn it, he touched the watermelons, didn't he? <laughs> you just lick the apples. <laughs> <laughs> they have waxing on them now, so you don't have to worry. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you've seen the videos of them melting it off. <laughs> yeah. Disgusting. More, more bullshit. Yeah, that's not causing internal issues. Pure wax. Yeah, yeah we're no. supposed to worry about coronavirus, now, not what we're ingesting on a regular basis, or <laughs> vitamins. Now, I'm shocked that you guys were, were busy, though, because uh, supplement stores were killing it for a while, especially in the vitamin department. Um, or you think, so, you think so more people it, were it, doing it came, Amazon? No, it was more like it came in steps. So, like, the first initial step was business dropped to, like, zero, zero mm-hmm. because no one's leaving their house and the gym's lifetime and beds were closed. Um, so not only, so I had, so the way my deal worked is I had part ownership, whatever percentage it is, it is. And I also got paid for my time there because gotcha. that's the way it was worked out. Um, mm-hmm. so she was able she was like, look, you know, obviously no business coming in. I'm gonna have to leave you home and we'll sort something out. I'm like, no problem because you know what? I don't blame you. Like there's no money coming in for anyone. So like, I can't be selfish and you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'll work on the back burner on the percentage part. Um, and then, you know, business started going back because she was calling me. So I was at home every day and she was calling me to make decisions every day to order to, to, um, should we get this in? So like people were coming in customers with questions. So finally, after like the third week of working for free at home, I was like, look, I I can't do this. Like it's been three weeks and now you're just taking advantage. You have me as a free advice box. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not getting paid shit. So like all I wanted was just give me what I would get on unemployment, and I will run that store because it's my store. Why wouldn't I? I'm not looking for a handout. Just give mm-hmm. me what I would make on unemployment, so I don't have to take unemployment. You want it to be successful, right? And I'll yeah. take care of the store. I'll be there every fucking day. I don't. I'm there every fucking day anyway. You don't do shit. So let me just do what I was doing before, mm-hmm. and I'll take care of it. 
Um, so I said, so, and also towards the end, we we're butting heads. So, you know, so I, so I just put on the table, I'm like, look, I'm going to have to go on unemployment because I don't know if she thought I was, wanted to beg, she was going to make me beg or something for my job. I didn't, I didn't care that much. Like I was going to get more on unemployment than I would there, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to have to take unemployment because you're not, you're cutting out work because of Corona, like fairly, whatever. But like, you're not doing anything about it. Like you promised. And she's like, yeah, go on unemployment. So I went on it. I never heard from her again to this day. To this day, I have not heard from her. Not a how are you? How's your family? Is the corona? To someone who worked for her as a slave for how many years? Not not one thing. Not one. The second I was useless, that was it. Um, so I went on unemployment. I collected. Oh, so the only time I, I actually had to contact her because I had to dissolve my partnership. Because mm-hmm. after a while, I, I don't. I think she knew I wasn't coming back. But yeah. for tax reasons and unemployment reasons, I had to dissolve my partnership. Because you can't be if you're owning. I'm a collecting company. money, right? So I dissolved it. You could segue into it. I mean, oh, listen, yeah. listen. Yeah. The, the moral of the story is, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll sum. I, I'll sum it up because people could be butthurt anyway. I'll, I'll yeah, su- everyone's gonna be butthurt. Everyone's gonna be butthurt. Butt Listen, I'll, I'll sum it it's up. Twenty twenty, we're all butthurt. Here, here, here's here's the sum of the story. The sum of the story is John was in an unfavorable unfavorable position career wise Mm -hmm. that he did not want to be in anymore as we all have at some point Mm -hmm. I couldn't stand working for the cult that's fucking Apple anymore I couldn't stand working for the audio video company that I work for and although I love the person that brought me in for the time being to sell copiers for six months I also wanted to crash into the fucking overpass on the southern state every goddamn day (laughs) so I could not wait to just get off and do my own thing so I can I, actually, I can I can feel for you on that, and I can sure. understand from a career so perspective. I, I'm going to ask you this, and then we'll segue out of this. So, like, did any of your, so the problem the main problem I have, and why I'm so pissed? I don't you know whatever. I was in an unfavorable position, but I'm not pissed because of that. I'm pissed because when I went to do my own thing, she tried to it was tried to be stopped any way it could. So I had her. So I had a few things happen, and I want to clear it up here because people are listening, and people obviously know it's mm-hmm. not true anyway. So the first thing is apparently from some customers that went there, and then obviously when I opened, they came to me, and they're never going back there again. Uh, I heard that I was fired. Not that I left voluntarily. I was fired because I stole product and was, and was selling it on the side. So to anyone that doesn't know, you cannot collect unemployment if you were rightfully terminated. So if I stole something and was fired, I wouldn't be able to collect unemployment, which we, we just established because she's paying it out of her fucking taxes that I collected unemployment, the 600 plus the 400. I collected a grand a week for however long it was, right? So that's bullshit. I'm not sure why she felt the need to tell someone that. I've never seen someone so insecure to do something like that. And then the other thing was I had every vendor call me that she contacted to tell them. So I never signed a no compete clause. Mm. I made sure in my contract because I knew it, yeah, this probably right. won't work out. Right. Um, at, some, at some point, you're going to want to do something. Right. Else. I might, you know, whether I'm 40 years old or 50, I don't know. Better I might, safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry. So I didn't put a non compete clause in there. I made sure it was taken out. So she decided anyway to call the vendors and tell them, don't sell to them. And, and, you know, so naturally, like, if I called you and said, don't do this, you're going to be like, why? Like, it's our job to sell. We make money. Like, why Mm -hmm. wouldn't we sell to a new vendor that's not near you, that's far from you? Like, why? Um, They pretty much laughed in her face. And they all called me afterwards, and they laughed in her face. And I hope she listens and understands that, like, they literally called me right after you called them and laughed in your fucking face, like, how ridiculous it was that... You try to get them not to sell to me. Like, what, what the fuck? Like, so she tries, she tried, and that's why I'm pissed because that's three different ways she tried to sabotage me for no fucking reason. I left and I didn't say one thing about the store. I, I didn't say, I just told people I'm not there anymore. Mm-hmm. And they would, the follow up would be, well, I want to go where you go. And that's fine. I didn't steal business. I didn't poach business. They came to me. I never advertised. I never DM'd people. I never stole customers. The gyms were closed. I couldn't, even if I wanted to. Yeah. Um, so that's how I ended that. Talk to me about starting the right. company. Yeah. Talk man. to me about. The introduction of like how you came with the right. the mm-hmm. name, like what what the locations were. There you go. Now you got it. There you go. Um, so, you know, I had actually thought for before even things went south. I I, I knew I was going to open my own thing, whether it be with someone or you know a part of where I originally worked at. Because I'm not going to I'm not going to mention that name anymore. There's no need to. Mm-hmm. Um, or just you know whatever. I knew. So I had ideas in my head, right? Um, so I kind of I, I always had the idea if I was going to do something, it had to be classic. Um, you know, just because it ties in with the name. I am a classic physique pro. And I, I like the old school. You even see on the design, the stars and stuff. Just yeah. the old school retro kind of thing. I, I like the look. And I get so many compliments on the name and the design that I guess it went over well with everyone. Everyone kind of got it. Yeah. You know, you get hit. It's nice and crisp. Angles. It's clean. It's simple. Yeah. It makes sense. Um, I like the drop shading on the letters. The drop shading. Mm. Yeah, the little like little Come details on, that I make it look the nice. I know. I know. Yeah. The colors, the color scheme. Yeah. Um, look like it honestly reminds me of Muhammad Ali's like yellow star shirt. Like that's kind of what mm. the inspiration I can was. See it. Yeah. Um, 
so I always had the idea to do that. And then, you know, when the pandemic hit and I was unemployed, um, and I saw, I had, after countless times of sending people to the old store, I'm like, fuck this. I, I should be doing this myself because this is my business. You know, you're a photographer. You're sending people to other photographers. Fuck it. I'm going to just film you guys myself. Yeah, not, not happening. Yeah. yeah, not happening, right? Um, so when I was at the old store, I originally had spoken to Warren. So you guys, no, John, you never came. Nick, you came. You saw the facilities, right? Yeah, I haven't seen yes. In the warehouse? Yes, so you yes, saw yes. East Coast Strength and Performance. My friend Warren owns that. That's a that's a athlete training center, trains top NFL guys, Major League Baseball players, and a lot of college prospects, and even high school kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so you get a lot of good traffic there. And he had originally asked me, um, you know, he wanted to do something there for the athletes, you know, just put supplements there, clean supplements. Um, and just, you know, he, he trusted me. So I, I never went through with it because I'd make the deal and we'd have it and someone else would be eating off it, not me. Mm-hmm. So I never really brokered it or did anything. And then it popped back in my head. I'm like, this could be the first store. This could be the first front. So I'm like, I talked to him and I'm like, you know what? Instead of doing a hub, I'll just make it a fucking store. So that's what we did. It started as like a little closet. I, we knocked it in. We built it out. It's an open face store now. Mm-hmm. And it's the first it's the first location. It's the flagship location. Um, I know you haven't seen it, John. Nick, yeah. you saw it kind of half built out. It's, mm-hmm. st- it's still more stuff being done. But now it's officially a store, right? It's all, Listen, I, I like it. I like it for a couple of reasons. I like it because it's simple. Mm-hmm. And simplicity mm-hmm. wins in a lot of things. Um, we like the simple. Th- the theme really is simple. You simplicity. don't need to yeah. go over yeah. the top. You know, and like a side note. I put that that pit, that clip up of Dre, dude. I yeah. do long videos. They don't get good responses. Like even though I spend hours in perfecting little things, this, they don't do. I do a short clip like that with just like a little a little bit of flash to it, nothing crazy. Off the charts. So like that's what I'm doing now. I'm doing like little simple clips now. Little I think people clips. don't have the attention span. To they watch don't. The they yeah. don't have the. They don't have the attention span. So like I said, simplicity really right. does win mm-hmm. in a lot of different ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like that it's attached to the train facility because right. it's you all have in the same pe- warehouse. You have people that. Yeah. I mean, that's your. Dude, it, could it get better? You thought the Bev's other supplement store, right? Right. Because right? you don't know. You thought you thought that was a, a key thing where you had to walk across a parking lot and it's right there. This is literally in the same building. You finish, you're like, oh, mm-hmm. shit, I need protein. Oh, shit, I need this. And you walk right to you. And then we have in the back of the warehouse, which you, you, you can't tell now because gyms were closed when you were there, um, you have a really good uh, baseball training place. So you during the winter, during prime time, there we calculated there's about 300 people coming in a day there. So yeah. that's 300 people just from that indoor traffic, from that mm-hmm. si- south part of the warehouse coming in alone, not, to, not excluding the gym and outside people. Um, coming in, they're going to all want supplements for the kids, for the baseball. You know what I yeah. mean? So yeah. the indoor traffic is really what, why we put it there. Like, that's not really – so people, I guess, were kind of confused. That's not really – that first location isn't really um, – It's not meant to be like the it's not like you just right go to. Yeah. It's not the flagship location. It's not no, the fla- it is, but it isn't. It is. Right. It, it's flagship for now because it's the only one until yeah, the yeah. others are being worked on. But it's but not storefront. It's not like a destination. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. Like, it's just for now I needed it because I was tired of doing deliveries. And I've, this, the people, the following I have can come there, no problem. Mm-hmm. And then I get the indoor traffic of that place to complement it. It's amazing. Yeah, now the gyms yeah. are going to be open. Yeah. Um, so that was the whole point of that. And then the, the success of the first one showed me I, I really did make the right decision. Because we were about, we, this is the second day of the second month. So the first month was amazing. Like, I really didn't expect that mm-hmm. big of a turnout for a soft opening. We don't even have the refrigerators yet. We don't have a lot of stuff yet. We don't even have a, we don't even have a sign outside. Um, cause we're waiting for the gyms to open before we, mm-hmm. we, we're going to team up and just put up something big outside. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, you don't, and, you, and don't, you don't even have a Kenji there. You don't even yeah, have like, Oh yeah. You brought him for one day. One day, uh, but you gotta <laughs> like have him in there to really draw the crowds. Right. Out. Right. Yeah. That'd be great if we had him. So, <laughs> uh, the success of the store was great. I, I, to be honest, I didn't, I, I didn't know like it would even be that good. I'm kind of, in a way I am proud of myself. Cause I'm like, wow, like you did that in like two months. Like, you know, you took mm-hmm. you, during the quarantine, you came out with a successful business cause like you said, supplement stores are killing it, and we are doing very well there. Yeah. Um, and I'm making more now just, just starting out there than I was in my previous store, which shows. Phenomenal. That's just, awesome. And this is just one of the locations. We're working on a location in NASA, working at a location in Queens. Similar model, but the other stores will have, like the NASA one's going to be a smoothie bar. It's going to be more of like a conventional bougie. conventional yeah. store. Yeah. You see, did you see the Mission Nutrition? Did you see that? Did I have I been inside one? Have you seen the Mission Nutrition? What the the email they sent out at all? I don't know. No, if I'm not, uh, I don't know if you know the people there. Because they're cool people. Yeah, I've, been, I've 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 gone in there. Huntington location closed. They closed. I the, mean, they closed, they closed the Huntington storefront, so they're only doing Hicksville now. To well, be honest, whatever. I never really saw people because I go to Bergology a lot. I never really saw people there. Yeah, they were well, closed Sundays actually. This I'm in this industry with you guys. I don't even know the name. 
Really? Okay. Yeah. It's it was more of like a uh, they health weren't they wellness. weren't big on they weren't big on sports supplements as much as they were on health and keto and uh, stuff like that. So like the original store, like holistic. Kind of. Okay. I mean, they had they had a lot of they had a lot of CBD. They were selling the pre rolls. Okay. Fla- they sell interesting flour. stuff like the 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 their flagship store is like a supermarket almost. It's cool. Okay. It's, um, okay. I don't think you would find anything yeah, yeah, interesting yeah. there, but like my girlfriend likes it. And like I I, I, mm-hmm. I see it. it's cool. Um, I thought that was interesting. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That sucks to hear. Yeah, They're good sucks. guys. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the Huntington location, but they're going to focus on what is it? The Hicksville is that the last? That, that's a successful location. Yeah, the, Hicks, yeah. the Hicksville uh, one's a nice one in, in that uh, right next to the Planet Fitness. But who knows? Maybe that Planet Fitness won't be there anymore. I know. Mm. And that that that's the kind of crowd, John. It would be like a Planet Fitness crowd. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Um, and that that actually for, well, we're doing that. So that's why we had sports nutrition put in because we are sports nutrition. We're not. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm not trying to sell uh, collagen. <clears throat> Or really vitamins and stuff. You know, the guys coming to us are sports. They're athletes. They're professionals um, in, in their sp- respective sport, whether it's, it's uh, football, baseball, bodybuilding. You know, mm-hmm. um, it, it is sports nutrition derived. Um, it's, it's that, and that's the market. And that's why it's in the name. It's clear cut and simple. So you know what you're getting there. You know you're not going to – you know, I don't have to – I'm not going to get a call from a 70-year-old lady asking if we carry – collagen or magnesium. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like we got that a lot at Total because it wasn't clear in our name because we were at Total – uh, fuck! I said their name. We twice, were twice. We were. Uh, <laughs> I know. Shit. We were a sports nutrition store. We weren't really. You know, as long as we were catering to Bev's, we were a sports nutrition store. We weren't anything mm. else. And, and she didn't want to make a connection to Lifetime. She didn't want to go there. So we didn't have that crowd. We didn't have that demographic in there. And to be honest, that's why the store will never was never as good as it could be because. You have to learn how to tap into your into your markets. That's really yeah, what it yeah. is. It was, it was easily there. It was it was right across the street, and just nothing was done with it. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah. So for classic sports nutrition, that's what we're doing. That's uh, the first location now in Farmingdale. Mm-hmm. Um, Obviously, you don't want to expand too quickly. Yeah, right. I, I just have the second spot. I want to get open because we have Derek on that. Nice. Uh, nice. We need to give that guy something, right? So <laughs> hey, love Derek. Uh, we have him to handle. I trust him. So how's I know. He, how's he feeling? He's good. He's good. He's ready. You know, he's he wants. He, we're we're getting things moving along, but I'm still also the. You know, these things take longer than I think. So like the first door yeah. was supposed to be done July. It's all uh, June. It's August. I'm still working on. Mm-hmm. I'm still working some things out. So like I don't want to. Like you said, I don't want to. You rush. Don't, yeah, you don't want to rush everything right. to be open because then yeah. that's when people get more shit than they than they than it's worth. Mm-hmm. Right. But now that gyms are opening, I should. You know, try to balance it a little better because it's a good time now to get things moving again. Gym's mm-hmm. opening up, um, so we're gonna we're, we're we're still going back to work on that. Um, so that should be done. I'm hoping by the end of the year. Cool. And we'll Pretty have two awesome. spots. Yeah, and then maybe another spot next year. Um, we'll see. Little by we'll little. See. Yeah. I, I like a few of these. I like the model of it. I like putting it in a gym or sharing it with a gym. Mm-hmm. Um, the risk is a lot lower, and the the demographic is right there. Um, yeah. And it's worked successfully at this spot. I know it'll work well at the second spot. And um, that's why it worked well at Bev's, too, because it is what it is, right? Well, think about LA Fitness. Think about the, the smoothie bar they have. How many mm-hmm. people hit that up on their way out? And they just Always. sell smoothies. So yeah. if they actually sell other, you know, um, if they were allowed to sell sports supplements or proteins and, you know, BCAAs, whatever, they would mm-hmm. do much better. They'd be killing it. Yeah. Yeah, for they, sure. They don't need a. So what I never want to do is have to confine myself to a store like that ever again. Mm-hmm. Um, like I was there, like you guys saw me, I was at the old store every day. Oh, I think you guys walked in as uh, you, you knew who was going to be there. Yeah. No question asked. I don't want that. That was a waste of my time. Cause I used to just wait out the clock. I was miserable there. Like looking back now, I was, I was honestly depressed there and I didn't realize it until I left. Cause I'm so happy now. Mm-hmm. Um, you just don't realize these things. You're like a robot. You turn everything off. I couldn't go away. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't, I couldn't even take a day off. If I, if I took a day, if I asked for a day off, it'd be, oh, unless you got coverage, no day off. I'm like, okay. Cause I'm not taking yeah, a day fuck off. It, I guess it's I'm not, not taking worth the argument. Yeah, so, I mean, we only have another worker sometimes, no, at that point, no other worker, so if you're not covering, I guess I'm not taking a day off, so. Mm-hmm. Um, I never want that to happen again, and the cool things with these models is that um, the gym staff sometimes takes over. Like, right now, I'm not there, I'm with you guys, so I don't yeah. have to worry about any of that. It's all covered. That's I can awesome. keep expanding, do other things, chat with you guys, and, mm-hmm. you know, so it's great. So let me ask you, what's the, um, what's the go-to lines that you're selling right now if people want to come in, support? You know, yeah. what, what, are the, what, are the, what are some of the stuff that you're stocking? You know, I got that nut butter from you. That shit was great. <clears throat> yeah, so I think I'm the first one right now, at least in Long Island for now, to be carrying the Fit Butters. Yeah. Uh, oh, great, that's awesome. Yeah, they're a great new company. Um, I don't know anyone else. I'm sure by now someone's seen a post and copied it. Whatever. It's a 
But um, mm-hmm. that's great. I don't know what flavor did you get s'mores. Yeah. So that was a good one. Oh, you made yeah, me try I, that. It was fucking yes. delicious. And yeah. I didn't realize you have to. I didn't realize you have to like mush the s'mores on top into the nut butter. If you don't want to eat it all at once, yeah. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sitting there like an asshole just scooping <laughs> off. I'm like marshmallow for me. <laughs> just eating everything. So we sold a ton of those because mm. that that's a nice attraction. Because like I said, no one else had it, so it kind of brought people in. Um, but you know, the, my favorite brands and the ones we 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 do the most with. Um, Nutribio. I'm actually an athlete of theirs, so we do. Yeah. We, we 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 go hand in hand. I was and I people say you just recommend them because you're an athlete. I, I actually approach them because I love their stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I've been using their stuff for years. One of the cleanest companies. They third party test every batch of stuff they get. Um, they're good people at the company too. Mm-hmm. Them. So you got Nutribio. You got a Nova Farm. Um, they make some really in, innovative things. That's why I keep them. Um, they're kind of not your typical cookie cutter. You know, there's your pre-workouts, caffeine and some other stuff. They actually think outside the box. That's why I really like them. Enduraline, I don't know if you used it by them. Um, it's the powdered fat burn. I'm always posting about no. it mm-hmm. on one of the pages. Um, so we do a lot with them. 5%, believe it or not, Rich Piano's, uh, he was, yeah. he was a part of that. Um, John, you, you, you like that company. Yeah, that's, that's we my favorite, through, we, that's my favorite something company. And we know, yeah. it, we know it through Meezy. Yeah, yeah, Meezy's great. Yeah. Meezy's great. Yeah. Yeah. Meezy's a good dude. Um, that's pretty much the main, you know, it's funny. I use 5% and I pretty much use Nutribiome. That's really about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's really, yeah. 5% is a great company. The people that work there are awesome because people are always like, that's oh, well, Rich Piana is dead. I'm like, well, Rich Piana only owned like 5% of the company. So like, it but wasn't really, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it wasn't really, uh, about him. I mean, mm-hmm. his, Im- the imaging was about him, but like the company, he, was the brand, but he had nothing yeah. to do with it. Like he didn't come up with the ideas. So that, I think that's <clears> what draws people away sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, so the company is great. The people there are awesome. Um, yeah. That's a good brand. I, I like uh, Project AD, the pink company, mm-hmm. Shreddable. Um, mm-hmm. They make some good stuff. Um, and a lot of these companies I like because they support brick and mortar stores. They don't. They don't. They're not sell. doing all retail only. They're not doing stuff. online yeah. retail. They're not. They're not selling out to Amazon or Bodybuilding.com. Well, you know, after um, everything happened, I stopped going there, and I got all my five percent stuff from Amazon. Mm-hmm. It was more expensive from Amazon, and I'm like, well, yeah. I'm not. I'd, I'd rather spend the more money on there. But now I have somewhere better. Yeah, exactly. you know what I mean. Um, yeah, so that, that's the thing. They have respected map pricing mm-hmm. online, so you, they can't, you're not allowed to sell below. Or they'll, they'll make you not carry them, mm-hmm. which is great for us because now we're not getting undercut by Amazon or by, you know, by, yeah. by online retail. Um, so that's why I, those, those are good four brands um, that we, we always do a lot with just because they protect the companies, they protect uh, uh, the brick-and-mortar companies, and they're great people, and they great quality products. I've yeah. actually never had anything Nutribio, ever. Never, I've never given you anything? Never tried anything Nutribio. The super carb is great, pre- like during workout. Uh, yeah. My fat yeah. ass doesn't need carbs I, <laughs> at all. I, I eat enough regular carbs. I, I would have brought you. I really. Had oh no, no I'm not saying it because of that. I'm just saying. No, I'm, never, I'm just I, shocked yeah, yeah. you never I used hear, it. I, I hear a lot of people talk very highly of them. Gabe's purchased a, a tub of them. He he, he mm-hmm. always whenever he reups his protein, he always does Nutribio. I mean, I get protein from a lot of different companies, and generally, I like 90 percent of the proteins I get. Mm-hmm. But you know, the couple of proteins that I get every now and then, I'm just like, Meh, I'm good. Uh, you know, you taste. Right. chemically yeah. or you can just taste it and you're just like eh, I think I might pass this one the biggest problem with protein these days isn't even like the taste or anything it, it's the quality of it um, whether they're spiking it with amino so like let's say I put um, there's 25 grams of protein on the label right mm-hmm. but I only put in 20 grams of whey and put in 5 grams of amino filler like you know just spiked it with some amino acids right mm-hmm. so it brings down the cost on my end because I'm only using 20 out of 25 grams of whey protein you're buying whey protein thinking you're getting all 25 grams of protein you're getting 20 plus a bunch of uh, crappy amino acids you don't want. Yeah. So they, they buffer up the number that way. And uh, a lot of companies are fixing that now. But two to three years ago, every company was doing it. Really? Except for mm-hmm. Nutribio and a few other good companies. Um, and that was a big, big problem. There's a lot of lawsuits still, I think, going on with that. Oh, mm-hmm. tons. Left and right. Um, we got to get Rick on to get talk about those lawsuits. <laughs> yeah. That was a good podcast with Rick. Yeah, it was awesome. That was yeah. awesome. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, listen, I, I, I'm open to, there's so much shit we take on a daily basis. And in terms of like vitamins, mm-hmm. uh, in terms of like extra substance for some people, in terms of actual supplements in sports nutrition that we take, you just want to, you spend your, a lot of money on this shit. You want to make sure right. that's going to be clean. Absolutely. And that's yeah. the biggest thing. And you want to make sure what you're buying actually has it in it. Because some companies will say, you know, it's not regulated by the FDA, right? So like me and John can start our own company and sell uh, BCA pills, but no one's regulating us to actually fill it make with sure. So, fill it with sawdust. Yeah, we can fill it with whatever we want and sell and damn, it. Damn, you guys just cut me out of all of the fun. <laughs> you're, oh the, you're the marketing. We're going to hire you for the oh, videos. okay, good. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm the social media team. There you go. Yeah, that's that. I mean, we'll sell more that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's the thing. So mm-hmm. a lot of companies are selling stuff that don't actually have anything in it or which are, you know, or it's spiked with something else. Or it, yeah. It's crazy. It's a really unregulated industry in that regard. So 
even when I tell people, even with protein, like, ah, this protein is uh, so a, a big one, um, optimum way. You guys definitely used it, right? It's mm-hmm. been around for years. So there's a lot of people that just gold standard. They think it is the gold standard. So they've been, it's been around forever. And it's I dog shit. It, it's, I told them like, and they're like, well, this is, you know, I'll get them, I'll have NutriBio protein, mm-hmm. obviously. And I'll tell them, you know, this is what you want, but this is $5 more. They'll, they'll cry over $5, but re- whatever, how people want to spend their money, no disrespect. It, sure. $5 could be a lot. Um, but I'll tell them, like, well, why don't you go look up the 2009 Consumer Reports. They third-party tested Optimum Way, I believe it was the extreme milk chocolate flavor. And the amount of arsenic and lead it tested for was, like, in one scoop, was 10 times per 100 grams was, like, 10 times the healthy amount. Jeez. So such a clean company. Like, I, I, I was using them at the time mm-hmm. in 2009, 2010. Type in, like, t- Consumer Reports whey protein testing. Um, I was using it at the time, and I was like, fuck. So if you're telling me for the last six years, I've been, and, I, and that's for like one scoop, and I was using like four scoops a day. Yeah, yeah. So you're telling me I've been taking, like as a healthy <laughs> late teenager, early 20s, this much fucking lead a day? Like, this is crazy. Mm-hmm. And I trusted them because they were a big company, and like, I will never use a product from them again. I don't care if they change. I, I just don't trust them yeah. to let that happen in the first place. When a company's that big, you just assume everything's all right. Absolutely. It was a big scandal with uh, Walmart with that as well. It was their store brand the, protein. The Body had, Fortress, right? Is yeah, that what it was? Yeah. I think it had sawdust, if, that, if I'm it not mistaken. Have, it was it was something like that. It was I know they there they was got a lot of fillers. There was crap. fillers in there yeah, for sure. A lot of them. Yeah. What are you finding? We got Nick looking this up. <laughs> what do you got, Jamie? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, so this is um so I'm I'm scrolling. There's a lot more to the article, but it's not my optimum nutrition. But three daily servings of the ready to drink liquid EAS Myoplex. That was one of them too. Original mm-hmm. rich dark chocolate shake provide an average of 16.9 micrograms of arsenic. Imagine exceeding the proposed USP limit of 15. Oh, nice. So imagine drinking four of those a day and getting four times a day. Like, you know, you drink at least two or three a day. The yeah. samples of muscle milk, chocolate powder contain, uh, contained all four heavy metals. Great. And levels of three metals in the products were among the highest of all products tested by Consumer Reports. In 2009, muscle milk, EAS, Myoplex, Optimal Weight, these were the biggest pro. These were the biggest I remember, companies I remember taking them. We, like we all took them. We, yeah. we, we all ingested this. It's crazy. And they're just talking about the powders right now. The stuff that's in the stores, like uh, you'll find muscle milk at 7-Eleven. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The amount of preserving agents you need in that is fucking bonkers. Oh, for the RTDs, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, to keep the proteins alive. Mm-hmm. You'll have a shelf life of two years. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy stuff, man. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't know about that. And they're like, but it's, it was $5 cheaper. I'm like, well, you also got five times the amount of lead you were supposed to have that yeah. day. So why is, it was $5 is your, or, is your yeah. organ shutting down worth that $5? Exactly. So I, I mm-hmm. always tell people, they're like, you just like NutriBio because you're a sponsor. Or you just like this because you make more money. I'm like, no, I like it because they third-party test every batch. You can go online, take your serial batch number, type it in, and it'll show you both the fact that it meets label claims, so mm-hmm. no fillers, and the fact that it was absent of lead, metal, mercury, and all this other shit. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. And a lot of these companies that, I, that we sell and I mentioned do third-party testing, whether it's in-house or out-of-house, but they're mm-hmm. at least taking a step towards uh, keeping uh, it keeping it right yeah. one hundred. And they don't. They're not big. They're not like as big as like uh, uh, Muscle Milk was or as uh, um, Optimum Gold Standard was. So like they they don't even have the resources to really like they shouldn't have to, but they do it anyway. So that, that's right. why you got to support them. Just they well, do the right thing. That's investing in quality. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I like that, and mm-hmm. I like that you stand behind that too. That makes a difference, especially with yeah. stock and shelves. You're not just looking for profit margins. Nope. Go for quality always. Safety, mm-hmm. quality. Quality always comes back for you, man. Yeah, always, so, always. So, so tell me, where's the where's the location of the of your first store? Like the actual address, physical address. So mm. the first location is three sixty Smith Street in East Farmingdale. Cool. Uh, it's, it's at the cutoff of Nassau and Suffolk, but I believe it's Suffolk. Okay. Cool. Right. Um, right up the street from the Hooters. Yeah, by right by Adventureland. Yeah, uh, not All too right. far off. Um, I was just over there. <laughs> oh, where you should have came by. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's right by the. I go there also because the Vercaro zone at the Qdoba in Farmingdale, mm-hmm. right, right around there. the corner. I eat there all yeah. the time. Support them. They're good. They're good people. Damn! Too. Now I want some Qdoba on the way home. <laughs> Damn! Still sorry. haven't got. Still I, haven't gone there yet. I haven't gone there either, but I just know you it's didn't go to be... the one right by you in Plainview. Haven't There's gone yet. Is that theirs too? They, yeah, they own all. I have to. I have right. to go to that one then because yeah. that's easy. I can just take the LIE right back. Yeah, yeah. That's good. it's awesome that place. And then uh, talk to me. Plug yourself. How can people follow you? Talk to you. Ask you questions. Mm-hmm. Hit you up. So I, I don't turn down any DMs if you DM me asking a question. You know, I'll, unless it's like, unless you're really ass biting off a lot more than you can chew, and you're really asking for something I might charge for, like training or diet. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'll, I'll answer it. I'll answer simple questions and even product related too. I have people honestly tell me, look. I bought these products. I didn't buy them from you, but can you help me? And I'll help them, um, mm-hmm. even though I really shouldn't. So uh, my Instagram, jlinden100. We got the uh, uh, the store's account, Classic uh, Sports Attrition. Cool. 
Mm-hmm. Um, either one of those you can follow. And you have any questions, you can DM. Um, or you, people on the inside, like you, you guys just text me. So Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Makes it easy. Mm-hmm. But listen, I want to thank you for coming in. <clears throat> yeah, that was awesome. Absolutely. It's been fuck, quick. It's been, it's yeah. about, real quick. But it's been <laughs> fucking awesome. Uh, I'm going to send as many people as I can to support you and what you're doing, the mission, and this and that. I appreciate yep. it. And I got to come uh, check it on myself, too. Hey, John, you got, we'll, you got the shirt now, so you gotta, hopefully it fits you, but it double better X should fit. <laughs> I'm using yeah. the G-Code shaker you gave me. That would, so the G-Code's also a small New Jersey company. I love them. So yeah. They're, they're, they're a great homies. company. Yeah. Met them. I met oh, him, you know them? I met the, I okay, met the cool. owner. I forget his first name. I met the owner years ago. He follows me on Instagram. We, talk, we, mm-hmm. we go back and forth every now and then about stuff, but they're the old uh, Universal guys. Yeah, I believe so. The real GD is like Yeah, that's it. so. Yeah. Um, to be honest, like, so uh, real quick, I, I took mm-hmm. them. So I don't take, so new brands contact me all the time, right? They, everyone wants to come in. Everyone has the best protein, the best pre-workout. Everyone deserve, thinks they deserve to come in. Mm-hmm. Um, but the way they, you know, the company's always approached so aggressively. He approached very comp. He, from day one, he wasn't, he wasn't spamming. He wasn't advertising. He just generally seemed like, I think because a friend referred him, like put us in contact, a uh, mutual friend of ours. Um, and he, he supported from day one, even I wasn't even carrying him, that eventually that's how you get into a store, by doing that, not being over the top and just being supportive. Being a and, genuine human being. Yeah, not, not spamming away. And uh, he deserves to be brought in, and now we carry them. And as you can see, we sell them, and it's awesome. So yeah. good, cool. good relations there. I haven't gotten to try the samples yet, but I do use the shaker cup. I, try the samples. I, I do want to. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm so hung up on uh, what I've been feeling really good with lately is I'll use the pump from uh, VMI. And I'll use I like BMI. and I'll yeah. use yeah. I'll use Betancourt's Benox uh, so, uh, pre workout and I feel great from it. I don't feel overly jitty. I feel good. Just enough beta alanine. Use like, the Pump XR from VMI. You said yes. Yeah, I have that in my drawer mm-hmm. at my desk. Love it. My girlfriend's sponsored by them, and we we are bringing them into the store. Cool. Talk to Tom. Awesome. Tom's uh, shit. Yeah. So I we had Tom to, on. Yeah. Tom's awesome. Um, yeah, I I feel bad because we, I was we were going back and forth with papers, and then the whole that whole storm last week and knocked out my uh. power. When I was gonna do it. Scan some shit in and do it. Uh, the power knocked it out. Now I've just been too busy to even scan a piece of paper and send it to them. Uh, mm-hmm. But they're coming in too. They're good, they're good people. Yeah, Tom's Absolutely. Shit, man. We um, love him. Yeah. But all good shit, man. I'm going to have John kick this outro. So I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in this week's episode of The Voice. And Rizzle's joined by our man, John Linden. There we go, baby. I like that. <laughs> Peace. That was awesome. <laughs>